So I have reviewed plenty of ultra wide monitors on the channel before and in fact a lot of you guys know that I personally use one for myself. I've been using the 34UC87C from LG the past year and it's been fantastic. But when I heard that LG had a newer version of their monitors, I had to pick one up and see if it was worthy enough to replace my already amazing UC87C. Let's start off with some specs. So the monitor has a 34 inch ultra wide display, 5 millisecond response time and a 60Hz refresh rate with a 3440x1440p IPS display. Which means that you get really great viewing angles and the colors are more vibrant compared to matte displays. You also get sRGB over 99% which gets you really great accurate colors. So if you're editing or printing stuff, what you see on your screen is really close to what you get. The monitor comes with a beautiful silver aluminum base that complements the curve and on the back you can see that they went with an all white cover constructed from plastic which by the way contributes to a much lighter monitor down from 22 pounds to only 17.2 and that's with the stand it has a height range of 110 millimeters and a tilt angle from 5 to 15 degrees i also love how simple it was to set up everything just snap it in place and you are done no screwdrivers needed. The monitor is also VESA compatible so you can mount it against the wall or on your desk if you choose to. And finally back here you can find all the necessary ports. You get 2 HDMI, 1 display, 2 Thunderbolt 2.0, 2 USB 3.0 and 1 USB 3 up. Fun fact, actually one of the USB ports is compatible with Quick Charge 3.0 meaning you can charge certain devices like smartphones a lot faster if they're compatible with Quick Charge 3.0 of course. Moving our way towards the bottom, you can find two 7 watt speakers which uses what LG calls their Max Audio technology. And it doesn't sound that bad to be honest, but here's a quick sound sample. Between the speakers, you can find the joystick which is used to access the menu and other settings. Asus and Acer definitely need to take notes from LG when it comes to navigational buttons. The joystick method is and always will be my favorite way of accessing the menu. It's just so much easier. Finally, let's talk about the curve. If you're coming from any of their previous models, you will definitely notice that the curve this time around is noticeably more aggressive. And because of that, the actual width is shorter. You can especially notice it from the top, but honestly, I personally like this change as it provides a more immersive experience. A few other changes I noticed from the previous models are the bezels. I didn't think you can get thinner on an ultra wide, but I guess I was wrong. The UM98's bezel is a little over a centimeter wide. I've also noticed that the colors are a little more saturated on the UM98 compared to the previous more flatter colors. You can especially tell on the whites. Now the settings for both monitors are set to default and the brightness levels are exactly the same. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing, I for one enjoy the more vibrant colors. And finally, the backlight bleed has been greatly improved. It's barely noticeable and you have to have all the lights off in the room to spot them and even then it's hardly noticeable. Here's the backlight bleed from the previous monitor and as you can see, it's much more noticeable. So we all know the benefits of going with an ultra wide monitor at this point. You have all of this amazing screen real estate which is perfect for editing and especially multitasking. You get to fit everything on one page and you don't have to constantly move your head from one side to the other with a multi monitor setup. You also get to watch movies in the way they are meant to be watched in full 21 by 9 aspect ratio and finally gaming. More games are supporting ultra wide resolutions by the day and eventually all new releases will support this and I gotta say gaming has never been more fun for me. So far LG has made a ton of improvements from their previous models and I can definitely say that they are headed in the right direction. This monitor will cost you around 1200 bucks depending on when you're watching this video. This is a high end monitor and it's priced like one. With that being said, I would have loved to see a slightly faster response time and a higher refresh rate. I mean I would have been fine with even a 75Hz refresh rate, I'm not asking for anything over 100. But I get it, nice features like that cost money and I'm sure that will affect the price of the monitor. Another thing to consider before buying this monitor is the saturation levels. There's not really a huge difference, but if you're a video editor and color grade constantly, then you might want to adjust the saturation levels slightly. So who are these monitors for? Actually the list will be a lot shorter if I tell you who these monitors aren't for. Uh, so we got the hardcore and professional gamers who demand their precious 144Hz refresh rate and G-Sync. 
Uh, also streamers who actually do need a second or third monitors to watch chat windows and stuff like that. And lastly, actually I think that's it. Just basically those two. Needless to say, I have easily made the switch and this is now my main monitor that I use to run the channel. So there you have it, my review of the 34UC98. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like to show your support. And if you're interested in checking out the monitor, make sure to check out the links down below. I also want to give a huge thanks to LG for setting this out for review. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.